let's take a look at the probability impact grid. This helps me to understand the severity of the, the risks that my project is facing. You can see an example of the probability impact grid just to my side here. Notice that there are different shadings, which I'll explain in just a moment. But to begin with, there is a probability scale and there is an impact scale. Next to these headings, you can see values. For example, next to probability, you can see 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Next to impact, you can see 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. Now, these scales are recorded in your risk management approach under the heading, quite aptly, the scales heading. When you take these two values, one from probability and one from impact, and where they cross over, you multiply them. So for example, if you were to take the probability value of 0 0.9 and the impact value of 0 0.05, where the two meet in that grid, you get a, ra a ranking value of 0 0.045. The different shadings represent severity. The darker the shading, the more impact that risk potentially has. So the very dark shadings that you can see on this probability impact grid will probably result in the project manager having to escalate those risks to the next level of management for them to intervene to determine which action to take. It's a very, very useful tool, and it's very, very good for helping me to assess the impacts of individual risks. The scales are not decided by the project manager. This will be a decision of the project board and often a reflection of the risk management structure in the actual organization itself. The next document you can see to my side is the risk register. Now the risk register is a way of being able to record and track the individual risks facing the project. Again, it's gonna be up to you to determine the setup of this. Don't do it in isolation. Consult previous project managers or previous documents or go through your project support office or project assurance and ask them for guidance. The various headings can be predetermined or you can decide to remove or add additional headings in. It's up to the project manager to ensure there is sufficient control around using the risk register to meet the governance levels. It's a regularly updated and often referred to as dynamic document. Any risk that's added to this never ever leaves it. It will always permanently stay on there. So once you've completed a risk, don't delete it. Keep it there so you can reference back to it. Also, when we start looking at risk interdependencies, or in other words, risks which are linked together, you start to realize that it's far easier to track on a risk register when they're all recorded than if you start deleting them. Either or, you can determine how this risk register is going to be controlled. And invariably, a lot of project managers will allow the project support office to take control of it. Mm -hmm.